What happens to satellites when they're no longer useful? We can't like shoot them down, so we've got to crash them somewhere, right? <music> Greetings programs, Trace here for DNews. Did you see that lunar eclipse a little while ago? Real pretty, right? What you probably didn't know was during the eclipse there was a plan to crash a dying satellite. NASA's Lunar Atmosphere and Dust Environment Explorer, or LADEE, was launched eight months ago with a 100-day lifespan. It's the size of a large refrigerator and was sampling the thin atmosphere of our moon. But once its mission ended, then what? NASA scientists decided the best thing to do was crash it into the moon. They set up the orbit before the lunar eclipse in case Laddie didn't survive the lack of sunlight and extreme cold in the Earth's shadow. This is not the first moon crash we've had. Laddie is just the newest to join the growing space scrapyard on the far side of the moon. When the Ranger 4 lunar probe crashed due to computer failure in the 1960s, it became the very first satellite to spend the rest of its time on the far side of the moon. We never landed anything over there on purpose, so it's really just the dead stuff. According to Space.com, there are six confirmed crashes on the far side of the moon, five American satellites, and one just a little fella from Japan. But there could be more, because India, Japan, the Soviet Union, and the United States all lost or left bits of space junk orbiting our moon from past missions, all of which could have crashed on the far side. If you include the facing side of the moon, because the moon doesn't rotate, it always faces us with the same side, there's 71 different sites with leftover bits of equipment from us, the Soviets, Japan, India, China, and the European Space Agency spanning from the late 50s into this decade. We're not hurting the moon, by the way. The far side has been pummeled with things far larger and worse than Laddie. But is it wise to start a lunar landfill? What else could we have done with this old equipment, I guess? It's not as if satellites Satellites are biodegradable in space, so the most common plan with orbiters is to decay their orbit until they burn up in the atmosphere or crash. Sometimes, like with most satellites around Earth, it works perfectly, but other times, like with Skylab in 1979, giant chunks make it through the atmosphere and crash onto the surface, which happened in parts of the Australian outback. Earth and the Moon aren't the only planets under attack from our human space junk. Mariner 10 has been orbiting the sun since its mission ended in 1975. Messenger is planned to crash into Mercury when its mission is completed. Venus has Soviet Venera probes all over its surface. Mars is super popular and also tends to kind of eat satellites and missions as snacks because more missions have been attempted to Mars than anywhere else with more failures. 25 missions have ended in failure. Yeah. And that's just the inner planets. We've sent probes to every planet and many of their moons. What should we be doing with these old satellites? Are you worried about one smacking your house or something? Share your fears with us down in the comments, guys. And if you and your fellow humans have a great idea for how to safely recycle old satellites, come tell us on Twitter at DNews or you can find me at Trace Dominguez. When I think of what some of these satellites have done for mankind, I feel this amazing sense of wonder, similar to how I feel when watching Shots of Awe with Jason Silva. This guy is a deep thinker. Check it out. The fact that less than 2% of the United States land mass would support all of the wind, solar, and hydroelectric power generation required to meet energy demand is amazing. Now again, it all comes down to the fact that we need to make a cognitive leap. We need to realize this is already possible now, today, with existing technology. I feel like I should get a visualizer and some Led Zeppelin after that. Tune in to our sister show, Shots of Awe, at youtube.com slash shots of awe. We'll see you next time.